Okay, welcome to our web seminar series Tech Tuesday. Our topic today is an introduction to the encoderless safety functions. We are pleased that you have logged in today. My name is Christine Gabel. I work in the product marketing at KEB. Next to me is my colleague Ben Tünnermann. He is functional safety engineer and technical trainer at KEB's um, training department. And I hope that you can hear and see us. And if you have questions during the webinar, please use the chat. At the end of the presentation, we will have a look at the questions and uh, maybe discuss a few of them. And now I would like to hand over to Bert. Yeah, also welcome. Uh, my name is Bernd Tönnerwan. I'm in the training department in KB and at all, also a responsible for the trainings for safety on the drives. Um, yeah, and then let's start. I uh, have a presentation. We will follow this presentation. And uh, as uh, Christine said, uh, after that, we can uh, discuss some questions. Yeah, so encoderless safety functions, a new product of KB. Uh, in the generation six inverters um, has some uh, big advantages, also some disadvantages, uh, and I will explain how to handle this um, in, uh, you know, in machines application and so on. So what we will uh, discuss uh, generals uh, detecting of speed and uh, speeds without encoder. KB Safety Module 5 with encoderless speed. This is the hardware which handles this. Uh, encoderless safe operation, some conditions. Qualification in which application can safe speed be used without an encoder. And at least um, safe door lock control or special function, uh, I will explain in the end. So some generals, detection of speed encoder, speeds without encoder. So what is the definition? What means encoderless safety function? A safety function must lead to a safe state of a machine. This safe state can be stand still or limited speed or limited movement distance or whatever. Some safety functions do not require sensors like STO, SBC, uh, so brake handling or so. Then there are safety functions that re require sensors, uh, such as safety, safely limited speed, safe operating stop, safe direction, uh, safely limited position, and some else. So definition. Uh, examples for applications with safe limited speed. So typically slow movement of a machine element with open door for adjustments, for cleaning, for maintenance or whatever. Movement of not, of not covered machine parts. For example, here's a CT uh, which moves around the patient on the, on the table. And also uh, compliance with the speed limit so that tools or workpieces may not be damaged by centrifugal forces. So in grinding machines or saws or whatever. So how works speed detection? This safely limited speed needs a detection of the speed of the drive. That can be done in direct way by safe speed measuring system like encoder-based speed detection. Or, and that's new, or uh, indirect by detection of the electric field by three-phase drives, encoderless speed detection. By this, it's assumed that three-phase drives follow the electric field. So, the function is the electric rotating field is generated by the drive controller or frequency inverter. The independent safety module detects and monitors the rotating field in parallel. 
in order to achieve a high performance level or zeal, a two-channel detection is required. The a transformation position of the output frequency is diagnosed and compared via the internally measured electric variables. That means uh, we have a look to the pulse wide modulation and also in the output of the inverter to the um, sinus form of the current and sinus form of the voltage. So KB safety module five with encoderless speed detection. It's an overview of the safety, including KB Commivert. So we have the standard generation F6, S6K, um, F6 and S6, so Foxtrot 6 and Sierra 6 is uh, the generation 6. Um, the difference between is at all the size. So S6, say, uh, Sierra 6 is for smaller to medium sizes and F6 is from medium to bigger sizes. Um, the handling is the same. Uh, so in this compact, we have a STO fix on board. Then we have F5, S6 application um, board. There we have two different safety modules, safety module one with STO and SBC fix and safety module three with more possibilities, five inputs, fail safe over EtherCAD and speed detection with encoder. And here we speak about F6, S6 professional uh, with safety module five, uh, three inputs, fail safe over EtherCAD and encoderless speed detection. And in the future, uh, we have uh, safety module four, uh, it's under development uh, with more possibilities, speed detection with encoder or without, and but takes a little time to uh, to place it on the market. So, which safety functions do we have in safety module five? This is STO, safe limited speed, safe stop one, safely limited acceleration, safe maximum speed, safe brake control safe speed monitor and safe door lock control. And let me explain a little bit the safety functions. The importance function is safely limited speed, SLS. So the maximum speed level uh, will be safely observed. If the actual speed exceeds, um, sorry, if the actual speed exceeds the safe speed Limit an error is triggered. Uh. Hmm. Okay. So the function can be disabled by digital input or safe bus system. So safe stop one, SS1. We have two versions. This is SS1 ramp monitored. This is triggering and monitoring of the motor deceleration and triggering of the STO at the end of the ramp. And the second possibility, safe speed, um, safe stop one time monitored. So triggering of the motor deceleration and triggering of the STO function after a defined time. So in this apart uh, the deceleration at all is not observed. Safely limited acceleration, the SLA function ensures that the motor shaft does not exceed an acceleration rate. So by the sign minus, we can also observe a deceleration. Safe maximum speed, uh, SMS works like SLS, same limits, same possibilities, but it's always active and so need no hardware input. In the KEB safety module five, the factory default is in 120,000 RPM. So in normal application, you do not touch this limit. Safe speed monitor. This function delivers an output signal to indicate if the motor speed is below a free predefined limit. 
So SMS triggers no function, no reaction in the module. The reaction must be done and by an external safe PLC. A safe output is required for that. The function can be triggered by safe input or also enabled permanently. So classification, um, we have to offer some uh, safety values for each safety function. Uh, so they can calculate your safety function in the machine. It's uh, part of the operation, operating instructions. So reachable performance level or zeal level for STO, SBC, safe break control and SS1, time controlled. Uh, we have PLE, zeal three, and the others have PLD, zeal two. We have a certification by TÜV Rheinland for the safety module. Yeah, encoderless operation conditions. So encoderless mode permits some motor types. So we can handle three-phase asynchronous motors, three-phase synchronous motors, synchronous reluctance motors, and also IPM motors, integrated uh, permanent magnet motor. So some conditions must be fulfilled. The motor must be able to follow the output frequency at every operating point. No external forces that accelerate the motor may act on the, mot on the motor, because then motor can have different on much more speed than the detected frequency. The drive controller must modulate. So that means in an error state where the modulation is off, speed cannot be detected. The output modulation grade must be greater than the minimal size. That means we have a minimum output voltage to detect the sinus form. And the same at the output current. Also, we must have a um, a specific value so that we can detect the sinus. And also some functions which can trigger impermissible jumps in the electric transformation position must be deactivated, like hardware control, hardware current control, or for example, speed search. So especially we have to observe the slip of the asynchronous motor because the slip is not taken into account of the detected speed. Considering, the, considering this, some points must be observed. In motor operation, the motor slip speed is always lower than the encoderless detected speed. During the deceleration, the actual motor speed will be higher than the detected speed due to the generator slip. In VF operation, in the field weakening range, the increasing slip means that the motor shaft speed cannot be, it can be much lower than the detected speed. In ASCL operation, that means um, asynchronous sensorless closed loop, it means a closed loop without a sensor by current control. Larger frequency dumps must be expected due to the active speed and current control. This requires greater tolerances than in VF operation or with encoder, so a normal encoder. So we have some limits. So the speed detection cannot realize a standstill of the motor because then you have no sinus on voltage and current. The lower speed limit is up to 10 Hertz depending on the size of the motor. And that means the bigger the motor, uh, the lower the speed is because of more uh, inertia and so on. In VF and encoder operation, lower speeds can be used than in ASCL or SCL. That means without encoder by current control because of the controller related deviation of the output frequency. 
the upper speed limit depends a on switching frequency for example it was a four kilohertz switching frequency uh, we can detect up to 800 hertz there's uh, normally no limit because the technical possibilities uh, normally are a little bit lower and on the other side on the maximum adjustable speed because it's not possible to drive any speed more than 100,000 120,000 rpm because of the sms function which triggers at this speed so reaction time the real response time result of the addition of the different times such as filter speed detection ossd time fsoe or the bus cycle etc with encoderless speed detection the mechanical delay time does not have any effect which results in a better response time than with encoder detection. It takes a little time to change the magnetic field in the motor and so on. The safety module always detects a change in the frequency when the movement has not been mechanically performed. So next step, qualification. In which applications can safe speed be used without an encoder? So using an applications, the encoderless speed monitoring is well suited for, for example, horizontal moving drives, tool spindles, high frequency drives, motors where an encoder is difficult or impossible to attach. If the application requires an encoder, but that's not suitable for functional safety, so we can use a standard encoder for positioning or motor control and do the safety without encoder drives with an which can change the speed very quickly and maybe some more less or no suitability standstill monitoring because at very small speeds it's it's difficult um, so the direction of the rotation nearby standstill is also not possible to detect. Uh, and also the big application range of lifting, lowering, uh, that pulls um, the motor by the load. And maybe some more. So a comparison of this. So the costs with encoder, and without encoder, costs are higher with encoder. You have to pay for the encoder. Without encoder, low. So no hardware for that on the motor side. Required space with encoder medium. Without encoder, you need to reserve no space for that. Startup test, so it means safety test. Startup um, is nearly the same um, work, so medium. Installation, safe encoders, medium. There are standard applications also for safety encoders. And without encoder, you don't have. Maintenance, encoder, yeah, you have to low, have low work on it. Without encoder, nothing. Risk of fault, mechanical or EMF, electromagnetic forces, uh, with encoder, medium. Um, without encoder, nearly low. Um, or nothing. Fastening, yeah, the, with encoder, it's mini, medium up to complex at special motors or so. Some, some, sometimes it's nearly impossible to um, contact an, an safe encoder and without, you have nothing. The accuracy of the detection with the encoder is very exact. Uh, without encoder, exact to medium. So the reachable risk level, depending on the safe encoder, normally you have PLE, CL3, and without encoder, only PLD, CL2. The reaction time on the shaft with encoder is medium and without encoder very fast, depending only on the frequency. The maximum speed with encoder is medium up to high, depending on the encoder. And without encoder, it's only depending on the detection of the frequency in the drive. 
Okay, so maximum speed, minimum speed. Yeah, with encoder, you can detect stand still, and without encoder, uh, only small speed, but not stand still. Yeah, and at least the function safe door lock control, SDLC, the safe door lock control function enables a door lock guard locking, door, door guard locking upon request. It's a, a KB developed safety function. So that means since a standstill cannot be detected without encoder, a procedure has been developed and certified with which a standstill is safely operated. As long as the SDLC function is active, the door lock output is enabled and the drive stays in STO in the same time. So that the motor cannot start when the door is open. You can use it up to PLD and ZL2. So the aim is that the door lock opening is only released when the motor has safely stopped. For this purpose, SDLC observes the deceleration ramp and the set to stand still by DC braking. If this procedure runs without an error, the output is enabled and the drive stays in STO. So the output is set when the drive has been decelerated and the DC braking took place for a certain time. DC brake is need to, to stop the little um, tumbling of the motor at the end of the ramp when the modulation normally is shut off. Then you can stop the motor by a DC voltage. A minimum current float, because maybe during this um, procedure, the motor is disconnected, whatever cable cut or whatever, then um, you don't can uh, detect the speed. And uh, when there's no current, then, then there's a risk so that the motor is tumbling and uh, not at standstill. So it means no error cured. No error in the ramp, no error in the DC braking, and then you can be sure that the motor is standing still. So, safe door lock control works completely only with asynchronous motors. You can use it also with synchronous motors, but the DC braking is not working. But normally, a synchronous motor has no tumbling no, because it follows strongly the output frequency, so you need no DC braking. Yeah, and a final note, because we speak about safety, that means uh, the information contained this presentation um, are notes in the sense of the explanatory, explanatory description. That means the current technical documentation of the drive always applies the representative of the properties. When you want to get the, um, the manual for the drive, you can visit KB homepage um, or the document database in CombiVis. CombiVis is a program of KB. And uh, you use keyword safety module or the article number of the CombiVert. And at all, now we are finished. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Christine, so you can take the uh, management. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Maybe you switch on the camera again yeah. so we can have a look at the questions. Thank you so far. Okay, so I've got uh, one question for you. What happens with uh, motor identification and speed detection? Uh, yeah, that means um, the motor identification is needed when you use uh, current control closed loop, or KB we say ASCL. And um, that means the motor is, uh, is checked by different uh, frequencies, different switching frequencies, different signals. And uh, this can not be used with uh, active encoderless uh, detection. 
because the safety module detects frequency, uh, output frequency, which is not uh, really, uh, really happening. So uh, at the startup, the motor detection must be done before we activate the safety module. And uh, I've got another question. Maybe you can also see it on your screen. Yeah. Sorry, a little bit here. So um, when you use a safe encoder, where is it connected to and what interface are used? So the, the idea of safety module five is to save money in safety. Uh, that means we have no possibility to detect a safe encoder in this. So um, we have safety module three and in former times safety module four, where we can detect safe encoders. So we need another safety module, maybe another application uh, to use it. Okay. Okay, then I've got another question. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I can read it. Why is safety module five not available in F6 Six. application? Yeah, that's a problem of the construction. Um, the safety module three, um, and is, in, is useful in its KB F6 application. Um, the development of some years ago. And uh, after that, we wanted to have more possibilities uh, to make additional safety functions also. And for that, we need more, more contacts, no, more, okay, more connection between the control and the safety module. And uh, for example, in the safety Module three, we have around about 20 pins on the connection and in safety module five, we have uh, nearly the double. Uh, so it's a completely different hardware, but we cannot connect safety module five with the, with the control board of the, um, of the application and on the, in the other direction. Okay, I think we've got a few minutes left, maybe uh, for a last question. Um, is it possible to use SS1 and SDLC at the same time? Okay, um, SS1 is decelerating and then goes to into STO, so it's a definition. And um, SDLC uh, has also decelerating. You can use, for example, the same ramp in both safety functions that can be activated at the same time. But the disadvantage is that uh, SDLC makes a DC breaking at the end of the uh, deceleration and uh, SS1 makes STO. And when we have STO, we have no possibilities to make the DC breaking because the voltage is off. So it makes also no sense. So if you, you, if you need SS1, then you can use it also included in SDLC. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think time is over. So thank you, Bernd, for the presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for listening. And um, if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to contact us yeah. via email, uh, for example, at webinar at KEBDE. And uh, we would be pleased if you switch on again to another topic. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye.